főleg a narcisztikus férfiak szexuális szokásairól beszéltünk eddig. Szem, a narcisztikus nők hasonlóan viselkednek a szexuális különbségekben, mint a férfiak, vagy egészen mások a fétiseik, szokásaik, viselkedéseik? No, they are completely different. Narcissistic women rarely have uh, similar fetishes. They rarely consume pornography, uh, for example. They also masturbate less frequently and differently. Narcissistic women have uh, narratives, erotic stories, um, which are grandiose in nature. So they will become a famous actress and meet a famous actor and then they will have sex in a yacht in the Caribbean, you know, this kind of thing. So narcissistic women would be a lot more narrative, a lot more holistic. So they will not focus on a body part. For example, uh, women, not only narcissistic women, have almost zero reaction to photos of penises. Uh, almost don't react to photos of penises. While narcissistic men, of course, have enormous, uh, men, sorry, have huge reactions to photos of vaginas. So, so psychology is totally different. Women focus more on stories, narratives, context, evolution, development, and so on and so forth, within which sex takes part. It could be very uh, violent sex, like rape, which is 20% of the fantasies, by the way. It could be less violent sex. It could, could be grandiose sex, so, you know, in, uh, Air Force One flying above the this, this clouds or something. It could be kinky sex, yes, but it has very little to do with the, with the male view, or the narcissistic male view. Um, narcissistic males would not recognize themselves in the fantasies of narcissistic females. Another thing that is uh, with women, narcissistic women's fantasies is they are the mirror image of narcissistic men's fantasies, where the narcissistic men would want to experience his feminine side, uh, to be submissive, to suspend his existence, to let go, to reduce anxiety by handing over control, by surrendering. Narcissistic women would have exactly the opposite. She would want to dominate. She would want to take control. She would want to, to become the narcissist. So in a way, they would swap, swap roles. She would become the dominant, tyrant, controlling, narcissistic, disciplining uh, uh, sort of person. And the narcissist would become the, the female, become the submissive. The, of course, this is all for 20 minutes. It is the narcissist who empowers the woman to become this. He gives her the power, which allows him to be relaxed about it. He is not really giving up power. He's just handing it temporarily to someone, but he is the one handing it. He's still controlling the situation. The, the narcissistic woman, on the other hand, who is entering the fantasy, realizes that her control is temporary, and so she tries to make the maximum out of it. Narcissistic women would be exceedingly dominating, um, even violent, even aggressive. They, the, if they have fantasies connected with domination and so on, they will be violent fantasies, which will involve expressed aggression or even use of firearms or knives or ropes or to hang. Or, so they, will, they would involve death, they would involve injury, they would involve wounding. Um, uh, so, ironically, it is narcissistic women who would cluster and gravitate in the more extreme uh, uh, poles of BDSM practices. So for example, in the choking community, the majority are women, not men. Few men actually do that, but, and they choke, but majority of women who seek choking want to be choked. Majority of people who want to be choked, I'm sorry, are, are women. And, uh, so in the choking community, majority, in vampirism, majority are women. That's an extreme BDSM practice where people drink blood, I mean, literally, <laughs> each other's blood. The majority are women there. Um, even in uh, practices like uh, Shibaru, the majority are actually women, not men. In extreme practices, we find classes of women. This is their chance to to experience things that are like 
male things. Oh. So they are the mirror image of the, of the Narcissist. But when we're talking only about fantasy, not about practices, the fantasies would tend to be fantasies of submission, but in grandiose settings and within a story, which Narcissist doesn't have. Men doesn't have. Mi jellemző a magasan funkcionáló narcisztikusok vagy pszichopaták szexuális életére? High functioning or productive or organized narcissists and psychopaths are simply narcissists and psychopaths who function well within social structures. They act pro-socially within teams and leverage other people to obtain goals successfully and in the long run. Um, Ironically, these narcissists would be the most extreme when it comes to fantasies and unusual and common sexual practices. So it is among this group that you will find the most extreme BDSM fantasies, most extreme submissive practices, dominant practices, uh, most extreme uncommon sexual behavior, um, for example, swinging or group sex. So, all these unusual sexual practices, which in the general population are, let's say, 3%, uh, among these people would be 50%. Literally all of them engage in these kind of activities. And you asked me once if I, if I think that all the sexuality of narcissists and, and psychopaths is deviant or perverted, and I said I don't agree with these, uh, these words, and I don't. But you can use words like uncommon, unusual, statistically speaking. So among this group, um, the most uncommon and unusual behavior statistically in the general population are the most common and usual activities for these people. So they compensate because for them to be high functioning, productive and organized, they must deny their nature. Their nature is not high functioning. They hate people. They don't want to work with people. They, they, are, they are aggressive, but they can't show their aggression. They have to think long term, but they want everything now. They, they don't have impulse control. So they must deny their nature. And the only place where they can show their true nature safely and without repercussions is in their sexuality. So it is the, 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 the nature, nature reserve. You know, the rest of the country is full of city, cities, but you have a small place with two antelopes and one elephant. That's the sexuality of the high functioning narcissist. It is there that he is himself. No impulse control, total aggression, defiance, uh, uh, dominance, uh, dominance submission plays, uh, humiliation, uh, anonymous sex, impersonal sex. You know, it, there is, is like coming, coming alive. Then he finishes the sexual part and he goes back to life. And in life he has to talk to people, has to convince them, has to argue, has to plan long term, has to wait, has to... Uh, all these things he hates. He hates his life. The high-functioning, productive narcissist hates his life. He may love the outcomes of his life. So he loves the big yachts, and he loves the big salary, and he loves the deals that he succeeds to conclude. But he hates the road. He hates the path to this. So the more his life is organized and productive, the more extreme his sexual behavior, and the more time it consumes. Extreme and consumes time. Ultimately, he loses the balance and he begins to spend most of his time in extreme sexual activity and that's where they fall. That's where they are discovered with prostitutes, with escorts, with homosexual boys, with, you know, that's, that's time of the fall. And many of them fall on sexual issues. I mean, they are discovered in sexual indiscretions and peccadillos and, and that's how they end up.